Peggy 18. In 2001, a real-world exercise tested the emergency response to a bioterror attack on the continental United States. The operation was called Dark Winter. Within just a few days, the simulation spiraled out of control. The operation predicted a rapid breakdown in essential institutions, civil disorder, and massive civilian casualties. Dark Winter has revealed how vulnerable we've become. Our lifestyle, our security, our safety, depends on a delicate and unstable economy. We've created a system so complicated that we no longer understand how to control it. Oil, power, shipping, transport. We live in a complex world. And the more complex it gets, the more fragile it becomes. The system is built on a global supply chain that gets things where they're needed, just in time. We've created a house of cards. Remove just one, and everything falls apart. And what's fueling the system? Money. Americans can spend $90 billion in a single day of shopping. Last year, 200 million people swarmed their local stores on November 23rd. We call that day Black Friday. Did you know that a flu virus can survive on the surface of a banknote for up to 17 days? One day, there will be a pandemic. It could begin during the crush of Black Friday sales. A pathogen will jump from tainted banknotes to human skin, onto food, toys, children, and loved ones. By the time patient zero feels the first sore throat, millions of people will already be infected. From this point, the breakdown will happen fast. Day one, hospitals will reach capacity. Panic will strike. Day two, quarantine zones will be established. Resources will be rationed. Transport will go into lockdown. Day three, international trade will stop. The oil will dry up. The stock market will collapse. Day four, the power will fail. The shelves will be empty. The taps will run dry. And once hunger and despair take hold, people will do anything for survival. By day five, everyone will be a potential threat. In 2007, a new presidential directive was signed quietly into law. This maps out the government's response to a crisis, a plan to cope with a real dark winter. It is known as Directive 51. There are rumors of shadow agencies, sleeper cells, covert agents, but nothing can be confirmed. Our complex world is primed for breakdown. And once the chaos strikes, there won't be resources to save us all. The only question left is, what will it take to save what remains? Snow is falling down just a little bit. The world's so quiet and still. Santa's out there flying around, and it's true that if you be good to go all year long, and the Civilians on the left. She's gone red. I'm low on packs. 
so we have to leave it. Hey right, guys, I got you on my map, so I will head your way. Sweet, see you in a sec. I'll meet you up on the corner. Okay. <laughs> Clear out this far. Yeah, the intersection's clear. There's some like construction site here on the left. Could check that out. I think we should come back later. I think we should go to the police station first.
Hey guys, how's it going? Once again, it's Robbie with Open World Games, and we are talking about more Tom Clancy's The Division. I cannot get enough of this game. I'm so excited to see what it looks like on the PS4, Xbox One, and of course, eventually, it will be coming to PC as confirmed by Ubisoft. I'm going to be talking today about the new next-gen Snowdrop engine from Ubisoft. It is going to be powering The Division and offering a lot of awesome looking effects Never including before. weather which i'm super excited about and of course once again i'm going to be going over the top comments from you guys the community if you have anything interesting to say about the division what weapons you would like to see what type of gear you would like to see please go ahead and post it in the comments and again if you are new to open world games welcome we are doing a tom clancy's the division giveaway for the ps4 xbox one or pc if you would like to enter go ahead and leave a comment below with your xbox live gamer tag psn id or steam id with your first name and please tell me what you want to see from the division i really like good comments and i will be sure to get back to you guys so let's go ahead and take a look at the next gen snowdrop engine as in film production snowdrop uses a light probe system that captures lighting realistically in both outdoor and indoor scenes So I have included a link in the description to a recent blog from Ubi.com and I go into a lot of detail about the Snowdrop engine but most fascinating to me is the actual destruction and destruction has become such a big deal in gaming thanks to DICE's Battlefield games and I think it's a great next step for all next-gen games to really push destruction and real-time physics. And they go on to say in their article, first and foremost is the destruction system, which will be a key aspect to the game's tactical cover-based combat. The destruction effect is not pre-baked in the game. It reacts differently dependent on the physical forces at play. So that basically means you can see glass exploding or wood shattering and it will react accordingly. So glass and wood and brick and stone all have realistic physics models. So that will be really cool. And it all happens in real time and stays there throughout the life of the game. So when you are going out into combat, cover will be decaying and you will have to plan your attacks accordingly. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. It sounds like no two situations will end up being the same thanks to this new destruction system. So look forward to that. And of course, the lighting in a game is absolutely everything, and I really do believe it needs to be dynamic with a day and night cycle, and that is exactly what we're getting with The Division. And they go on to say, if we move one object in the game, the light in the environment will immediately react accordingly, thus obtaining the most realistic effect. This applies not just to the indoor and outdoor lighting, but to the time of day as well. And actually in the trailer we saw fine particle effects reacting to real time lighting and I thought that was amazing. Yes, next gen is finally here. I feel like saying finally we're getting some awesome lighting and uh, I can't believe we're gonna be able to play in a New York City with weather and a day and night cycle. So that will be very, very cool. And Ubisoft did a recent community Q&A and then they covered the realistic lighting but most importantly the weather system which is looking badass. I cannot wait to see this weather system in action. So basically what we're going to see is a lot of snow on the streets and what they go on to say is because of snowdrops advanced shader systems the environmental services will actually change in real time over the course of the game and you will be able to see snow actually melting so that's going to be so awesome to be able to see that change and i'm a big fan of snow levels in games I actually really admire the older Batman movies um, because of the snow and because it took place during Christmas time. So I'm really looking forward to this game being more of a darker tone, but having that balance with the Christmas theme. And it's so odd to see Christmas decorations during the apocalypse. I think that's really creative. So look forward to snow. And what do you guys think? Would you actually like to see 
a game like The Division go from weather like snow into spring and then all of the seasons year round, I personally think that would be very, very cool because what they can actually do is plan DLC and other mission types around the weather. So it might be easier to get gear in the summertime, for example, and then you might have to prepare for the winter. So you can actually make the game last throughout the entire year and you can actually have this different feeling from the seasons. And I think that is what they are going to be aiming to do with their games on next gen. I don't know if we're going to be seeing that with Tom Clancy The Division, but I know these developers are thinking about a year round type game, and I would love to see them challenge themselves and do something really special with that. And with any open world game, you worry about how open it is and how big of a world you will actually be able to explore in New York City. And Ubisoft has stated their goal is to represent the majority of New York City and its major landmarks. I personally can't wait to see Central Park and I do hope that there are a lot of parks in this game because there's Brooklyn Bridge Park, there's the Flushing Meadows, and then a lot of other areas that they could cover. I do hope that we actually see the aftermath of these beautiful areas. Perhaps they're going to be refugee zones. Who knows? We will be finding out. But in the recent Q&A, they asked them what, to what extent is your game open world? And they go and say, our open world will be both dynamic and persistent. The dynamic elements are there so that we can create a world which feels alive and ever changing. Replaying an area or piece of content will vary from session to session and therefore feel fresh to the player. We want our players to be able to replay content which they have discovered possibly for a specific item or certain achievements or just because they really enjoy it. Persistency of the environment is also very important as we will add content and features to the game long after launch. And this question is actually the most important question that was asked to Ubisoft recently. The question is, will it be possible to enter buildings? And they say yes, and it will play a major role in the game. As you have seen in the demo, for example, agents of the division enter a police station where they find a lot of gear. In this open world game, we want to give the player as much opportunity as possible to explore and live their own adventure. In this brand, we are creating a whole new universe in an original setting and that will be great and fun to discover. So this is telling me a lot about this game. I think this game is going to be a lot about exploring every single building in the game. We are talking about the next generation here and I think that the fast travel system will also be important to exploration because I do believe they're going to do it like Far Cry 3 and Assassin's Creed where you have to go exploring to unlock the actual fast travel option, which I'm a huge fan of. I like to be able to explore first, then fast travel or no fast travel at all, because I really think that this is going to be one immersive game world. So the map size, I'm not concerned about at all since they were able to answer that most buildings will be enterable. So that is such good news. Look forward to being able to explore most buildings, and I can't wait to do it with you guys. And be sure to leave a comment below about what you think the map size should be, how big of a world are we talking, because a lot of games offer a lot of different sizes of worlds, but we really haven't seen games that offer a lot of interval buildings like The Division. I think that's going to be the big difference, it's going to be the level of detail and just how much places you can actually enter in this game. So let me know what you guys would like to see in terms of locations and everything else within New York City for Tom Clancy's The Division. Our lifestyle, our security, our safety, depends on a delicate and unstable economy. We've created a system so complicated that we no longer understand how to control it. Oil, power, shipping, transport. 
And now it's time to highlight your top comments from my previous videos. And I really enjoy doing this. If you guys actually have any thoughts or ideas about weapons, gear, locations, whatever you would like to see in Tom Clancy's Division, go ahead and leave a reply below and let me know what you think. I will be sure to reply to as many as comments as possible and also feature them in upcoming videos. So Corey Abernathy goes on to say, what up, my name is Corey. The division will be to Call of Duty what Call of Duty is to Battlefield. I see this exquisite graphics and complex storyline trumping Call of Duty's newest clone of their never ending series. Do not get me wrong, I like Call of Duty, but it's the same thing every year. Being as though The Division isn't entirely the same type of game as Call of Duty, I see it bringing in new fans. Fans that typically wouldn't venture into this type of game. Fans from WoW and other games like that could even find themselves playing this game. I really find it fascinating that you mention an MMO like World of Warcraft because I personally believe MMOs are what Next Gen is about because connecting with a community of like-minded players is everything and it adds so much immersion to a game, especially if you're playing with a lot of good friends. And I think The Division is going to offer just that. And of course, you're gonna have that awesome player versus player element in the game. So when you are going up against another team of players, you're gonna to wanna to defend your buddies. I think they're gonna to wanna to do the same with you. So that's gonna be really cool. I think the PS4 and Xbox One, and of course the PC, but more so the next gen consoles are really going to be pushing the interactive MMOs. And I think we're gonna definitely be seeing that in the division. And like you, I am tired of the constant releases for Call of Duty, I think. They, in particular, need to shake it up a little bit and try something new. And I am a big fan of Battlefield, so I'm looking forward to seeing what DICE does with that as well. But The Division, I, it's my most anticipated game of 2014. And yeah, I definitely cannot wait to get my hands on it. By day five, everyone will be a potential threat. In 2007, a new presidential directive was signed quietly into law. This maps out the government's response to a crisis, a plan to cope with a real dark winter. It is known as Directive 51. There are rumors of shadow agencies. And then Rage Monkey goes on to say, I've been following the game like you guys have since E3. It's had me all over the place emotionally with how the gameplay would be like. I've really been digging the survival open world games that have been flooding the scene lately. I'm hoping this one has a lot of open world survival aspects, but from what I've seen so far, I'm not 100% sure how the game is supposed to work. If you could clarify how the survival aspect works in the game, I would really appreciate it. So I understand his concern about that. I think he's really worried about the actual resource management and things like that. And from what I'm understanding from Ubisoft with little detail as there is, we are going to be having food and water to really worry about and players will be getting 72 hours of initial supplies. And it sounds like, yes, they are going to be draining over time. So you will need to trade and actually loot for these supplies. That's going to be your currency in the game. It's going to be very important that you keep up on that throughout the game. But they did say you won't have to worry about eating or drinking water throughout the game. So I don't know exactly how it's going to work, but we are going to be continuing our coverage of Tom Clancy's The Division on Open World Games on YouTube. You bet, no problem, it's my pleasure. Good morning, or actually, uh, good evening for you. Yeah, it's uh, going on almost 1 a.m. here, and uh, fresh start in the Monday morning, and then, you know, my Monday starts in about five hours, so. <laughs> but it's totally, <laughs> oh, totally right. worth that's... it, so. All right. Um, I wanted to go back into E3 a little bit and elaborate on kind of like a personal uh, thing, not like life personal, it's uh, just work personal question for you. So 
the new consoles totally overshadowed E3. Then here comes Ubisoft's presentation, and I'll honestly say everyone was basically mind blown. Like when out of nowhere the division was, you know, showcased. And you know, I rewound my DVR at least 20 times to watch that presentation. You know, I mean, I literally created the division world literally an hour after that presentation. Like I was literally hooked, bef like just instantly. Um, the question is, how does it feel to be one of the leaders behind basically the biggest game drop at E3 and coming into 2014 as probably one of the most anticipated games of the year? Uh, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's hard to describe, actually. The, uh, I think now we've had a lot of time for for the the shock and awe i guess to wear off uh i i can tell you for sure we we didn't expect the reception that we got i mean uh we were we were extremely happy of course and blown away but uh, uh i was i knew it was good and i knew it was uh what we wanted to put out there but the the interest and the reaction like you were just describing from a lot of people was was uh over overwhelming and over the top and now it's uh you know th that starts to uh uh uh, we you come to terms with that and now it's it's about building the game and and making sure that you deliver on uh, uh, Everything we need to do for for what we kind of uh, the promise we made there at, at e3 with with the demo that you when that you saw so uh, I, I I can say overall just extremely happy uh, Everyone was tired. You know, we we kind of busted our collective butts for that for for quite some time uh, and and then to see the reaction of uh, of the community and and hopefully our future fans for the game was amazing yeah uh, did ubisoft anticipate the same like were you guys like did you guys get doubled more developers after this huge craze or I mean <laughs> yeah yeah we have uh 16 times the amount no 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 uh uh we definitely will be working with uh uh right now the team is the same where you know we're, we're expanding and adding to the team all the time uh but you want to do that at the right times you know through the through the production process um but uh the team that was uh here for the e3 summer uh, a demo that you saw is still the same team right now. We really haven't added a whole lot of people yet. Uh, uh, but I'm sure as we get closer to launch, you'll see that Ubisoft is very big on uh, utilizing their studios and their resources for the big titles when they're coming out um, towards the end. Um, okay, so here's a, uh, another interesting question. I'm a very random question guy. Um, so let me ask you okay. this. If you were stranded on an island with electricity by chance, of course, uh, one Mountain Dew, Cheetos Puffs, a Lazy Boy, and a copy of The Division, and you had your choice, what console would you want? And PC is included as well, so. <laughs> you can't do that to me, Mark. You can't do that to me. I'm, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, on the record, of course, I would have a choice, but we're, we're, uh, I'll give you my canned, we're dedicated at making the, uh, the absolute best product for each one of those consoles uh, and, and SKUs. But no, no, no. I mean, uh, uh, the, to be honest right now, since I haven't seen, you know, everyone's just theorizing on specs and and uh, what they've read, no one knows anything. And uh, uh, we've got a partnership with Microsoft that we're very happy about uh, uh, for, for the game itself. So I can guarantee both consoles are going to be awesome and the PC version will be awesome as well. So it's, it, it's, it's a great question, but I can't, uh, I can't pick sides. You know? Okay, yeah. so you stated, okay, so I'm kind of picking that answer a little bit. So now you stated that you have kind of a partnership with Microsoft. Is that going to yes. uh, is that going to be any i know there's exclusives for both uh ps4 and um xbox one now is there going to be any advantages or disadvantages between the two versus you know because i know you know all these want all these consoles want exclusives so people can buy their consoles for those exclusives but i didn't know if there's going to be a substantial difference uh, uh, no, no, no. I mean, there, there is the details of uh, of the deal we have with Microsoft. You know, w will be coming out. 
Um, so we're not talking about the the uh, 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 the specifics, I would say. But it's not going to be it's not going to be a different game experience than um, uh, the PS4 or the the PC version. Now there may be uh, specialized content and uh, uh, you know along those lines for Xbox One players. Uh, but uh, the game will not be in any way uh, uh, an exclusive for for Xbox or, you know, um, we're coming out on all three SKUs and it's going to be uh, uh, great for all three SKUs. Sweet. Okay, so let's kick this shebang off with some fan questions because that's why we're here. This is a fan Q&A. Um, all right. I uh, yeah. So because that's they're eager to know, you know, whose question gets asked and all that fun stuff. And... If somebody and yeah, you know, I want to. If I want to ahead of time save my butt. If your question is not asked, it's all Ryan's fault. So please punish him and not me. But next time, I will promise yeah, that. They, they, <laughs> so um, first question. They, they already got mad at me for Reddit. Uh, I'll, I'll try to I'll try to answer as, as in depth as I can, but uh, it's never enough. <laughs> the um, okay, so let's start off with kind of the consoles starts, with, including PC. So, the advantages and disadvantages. Uh, will the division be released on all platforms at launch? Uh, yes. So the plan is to have simultaneous launch for all three platforms at launch. So. Um, that's what we're scheduling for. That's the production schedule. That's what we're shooting for. So um, that is the plan. Sweet. Um, user Ubilax asked, uh, will there be split screen capabilities? If, you, if so, yes or no. Can you explain the, the reason why? Uh, sure. Uh, it was something we talked about uh, a lot, I would say, half a year ago, um, and we really came to the conclusion that that's it's not a way we want to go with the game. Uh, I think for the for the experience we're going for, um, we want to you know an immersive online experience where you're playing with friends. Having a split screen just doesn't uh, it doesn't work for that type of uh, quality experience we want. So it was really just a choice. We want to have. Um, uh, each user have uh, their own screen, I guess, if you if you put it that way. So there won't be, there is no split screen uh, plans for the game. Okay, under totally understandable. Um, now, with the advantages and disadvantages from PC players to console players, uh, what's I'm sorry, what is the advantages and disadvantages of PC players to com console players when it comes to full UI, HUD customization, higher chance to handle more players in specific zones and areas and so forth. Uh, okay, that's a, that's a lot of questions, but uh, I think, no, 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 that's okay. Uh, I think the, the, I mean, everyone knows the main, real. I mean, the, the new consoles, I mean, they are PCs. Uh, they're, 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 yeah, the only difference is the input method, which actually is a, a, a very big difference for the, you know, for, the, for, for us as gamers. The, the difference between using a controller and a keyboard and mouse is pretty huge. So uh, that's why you can't really just port, you can't make the game for, uh, for Xbox and for PS4 and then just kind of port it to PC. You have to start from kind of uh, uh, the ground up for the, uh, for the three Cs, you know, uh, camera controls and character, and, and figure out uh, how that works with keyboard and mouse. Because, uh, you know, being a big PC gamer myself over the years, you expect a lot more different responses. You don't need an aim assist, you know, as much. How does it work with your inputs on the keyboard? So uh, we, we uh, uh, that's the major difference. The game itself will be the same experience. It's just about kind of... Uh, um, Tuning it and developing it for the input method that you'll be using. Okay, you, you answered like two questions I had in there, so that's pretty good. <laughs> okay. With with the porting, Excellent. with the porting, it was <laughs> pretty much the next question was the uh, you know a lot of people are wondering if this if PC version is just going to be a port and you know and but you elaborated perfectly, so that was awesome. Yeah. Um, cool. So now we'll get into the game. So now the division was basically coming off as a type of a survival game. <laughs> so Everlyn is asking, when it comes to collecting supplies, water, food, etc., the power of survival, how much of a factor will that be within the game? Uh, it's, it's a good question. The... Uh, 
Uh, I'm just trying to figure out how to answer this. So I give you a good answer that doesn't give away uh, uh, too much. I mean, uh, everyone, well, not everyone. I would expect a lot of people that had interest in the division possibly have been exposed to uh, uh, Daisy, for instance, um, or there's, there's a myriad of other survival games uh, that are very punishing with uh, uh, a lot of their mechanics for, let's say, food and water. You know, uh, a lot of these games, if you don't collect things, you will just straight up die eventually. Uh, the, the, the Division is a mainstream game. We want a lot of people to be interested in this game. We want to bring in people that are, you know, Call of Duty and Battlefield or Tom Clancy, old Tom Clancy fans. We also want RPG fans to, to play the game, people that just like online games. So you have a wide spectrum of people that you want to hit. And I think that uh, very punishing, without giving you the specifics, but very punishing mechanics like that uh, aren't good. They're not. They're not good for it, it. It's very good for a small audience that loves that kind of. Uh, I would say. Um, self-punishment <laughs> if you want uh, which which I also like as well as a gamer but uh, I realized we want to we want to uh, have those elements in the game the elements of survival the elements of using everything you find out in New York and the world uh, but we want it to be a positive always so it'll be something that is good for you when you find them but you don't need them uh, or you will die I guess is the uh, a way I can answer that without going into specifics that's fine um Cool. Uh, the next question, uh, which was one of mine actually, and you don't need to go too detailed in it because it is kind of a detailed question, but you know, just the basics okay. would be fine. Um, what is the plan of direction for the division when it comes to adventuring in New York City? Do you want the adventurer, aka player, to experience, say, hundreds of players spread out around? New York City that the player can pass by once in that area or mainly experience this when they are back at the at base? Uh, uh, well, it, this was another uh, uh, kind of choice, like the split screen question for us. Um, obviously, with uh, games, I think most games in this genre moving forward, you know, the players, the communities want a big open world. They want uh, exploration to be a big part of their games. They want to feel like they're not led around in these games and they can kind of uh, choose their own path. And we're hitting all of that. The big choice for us was, do we do a persistent uh, social open game space or do we... Uh, you know, or do we phase or instance it so it's tailored for the group? And I personally, I mean, I've been, I've been in the industry quite a while now. I've been playing online games since, you know, uh, uh, pretty exclusively since around, you know, I don't even want to say, but let's say back with EverQuest 99, uh, these types of games. And I think back then it was amazing to see people, you know, when you were just running around doing something and, oh my God, that's another player and, and wow. And I think that the, the, the thrill of that has more than worn off for, uh, for players. And now it's generally more of an annoyance when someone is there that, uh, isn't one of your friends or part of your group uh, in an area where you're trying to, you know, do content, do missions, do, you know, whatever. So uh, we, we chose to keep it more tailored and personalized for the open world space. Uh, but then there are areas which uh, we call social where you can see up to, you know, hundreds of players. And that can be the PvP areas as well as the, uh, the kind of secured areas out in Manhattan. Uh, so, we'll, so we'll have both. But when you're out doing your content or, uh, uh, you know, uh, basically uh, exploring Manhattan, you're not going to see random, you know, uh, Legolas 1111 run, run past you and, uh, and, and interfere with what you're doing. Okay, so you dropped a lot of uh, bombs in there that I would love to nitpick, but, you know, of course, okay. you got, I mean, if I keep you here, then the game will never get made, so... Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so I, I, I'm trying. I'm trying to give you. I'm trying to give you some stuff that people can read into and uh, and and dissect. So, I, I'm gonna. That's uh, a whole article in itself that I will be publishing here uh, in the next couple of weeks. But we'll just we'll just move on to the next one. So um, when it comes to and this one is actually a quick question too. Uh, will each area of New York City be a skill level specific area? If saying beginning is you know the beginning where zone starting is you know easier to kill mobs but if I want to go to this street because I recognize you know I grew up there you know will the mobs be harder or tankier and on top of that you know are there world bosses as well so you don't need to answer I'm sure that's sure. a name drop uh, world bosses I'm sure you're not technically supposed to answer yet but if you are to that'd be awesome <sighs> 
no, yeah, yeah, I yeah, know. Uh, I'll try to, I'll try to at least address the question because there's a lot of specifics in there, and we want. I mean, the thing is, I mean, uh, uh, I can give you a little personal philosophy on why I think it's important for uh, Mark for for games. What what uh, what I think has been lost a little bit for community and online games is uh, a little bit of the mystery and a little bit of the. Um, uh, uh, you know, players needing to rely on each other. And a big part of what we want to do with the division is to help create community again. So, uh, you know, uh, I, there are, I'm not going to name names, but there are very successful online games right now that, in my opinion, because of the way that they cater to their, uh, their fan base, which is great, uh, it makes it so that um, players don't need each other. It's more annoying when they try to talk to you or whatever. And so you get a very aggressive, negative community for those games. And so uh, I don't want to be evasive through the launch, and I will answer this question. But it, if, if uh, players and our fans are wondering why we don't answer these questions more specifically, it's because I want you to find out when you play. And I want you to, I want you to discover those kind of things. And if you just read interviews with me or other people from the team and you know exactly what to do, then that is spoiled for you, in my opinion. And uh, so uh, uh, to, to uh, and it's really important for the game for, for when we launch, I think. Um, but to answer your question, we do have progression. We do have progression throughout the game. Uh, uh, New York itself will be, uh, there will be areas where you'll experience the, the difficulty increase. Um, but if you can think of an open world game, there's many of them, you're running back through a lot of the same areas, you know, uh, as you're coming here or you're finishing your uh, a quest chain, let's say, in a different game. And uh, so you want to give players reason to come back to all of the areas of Manhattan from all level ranges. So it won't be a flat like oh, hey, uh, all of the content in this area, the E3 area of Brooklyn, is, is this type of, of experience or level. We don't want that. I want players to uh, really experience the full breadth of content throughout the whole area. So it's a mix of both uh, to answer that question. But details-wise, we can't. I, I don't want to go into those yet because I want players to uh, find that out kind of when it when comes Yeah, out. I saw your interview on. It was pretty much a whole interview on why you want people to, players to discover things and it was a great interview and I encourage everybody to go watch that interview it was very 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 great um, the the next questions actually I could combine into one actually um, user Fez monster and user atheist pretty much are asking about customization <laughs> options and when it comes to clothes and weapons uh, okay uh, they're just wondering what will what will be available uh, the customization, I think, in these types of games is huge. Uh, first of all, it's your first kind of attachment to your character when you are, you know, your division agent when you start the game. How much can you personalize it with your clothing, with your look, the sex of your, of your avatar, if you will. Um, all will be there. You know, the, uh, you'll, you'll have choices that affect your starting equipment um, in the game. The uh, the one thing that I also I know I've said in other uh, uh, interviews, but we we want to make sure that you can't make a bad choice. There's a lot of these RPGs where you can uh, you don't know. Again, we're not going to say a ton about the game, which is good in my opinion before we launch. So there's some mystery. So asking our players to then make a huge choice at the beginning of the game would be kind of silly uh, when they don't know how they want to do the game. So there'll be uh, uh, choices you can make for your character all through customization that affect, let's say, your, uh, um, some, of your, some of your equipment, but uh, there is no bad choice. You won't have to re-roll because I chose X or Y at the start. Um, that's not what we want to go for. So... Um, but uh, customization, I think, is huge. And also, you know, it's a, it's a big part of RPGs in general. It's a big carrot. I want my guy to eventually look super cool. I want to have extremely good equi equipment. I want to, you know, I want to be able to personalize that, ex uh, that equipment. And uh, it's all it's part, of, part that of that kind of, kind of, of uh, uh, I don't know, fantasy, 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 you know, well, for, for this type of game. It's, it's funny, too, because I never really notice until, you know, I start meeting some people. Because, like... Some of my Facebook friends, it's like they're posting pictures of their characters. It's like, this is my character, this is what she's wearing, and he's wearing whatever. And it's like, you know, it's kind of like cosplay within the game. And it's like, 
it's a big deal to a lot of people, especially even it doesn't matter PVE or PVP. It's just it's like people love to stand out. <laughs> Yeah, and we have a. I think we have a great uh, opportunity with the setting, you know, being near future and and uh, you know, more realistic of a game, let's say, than a, a standard RPG with the with uh, fantasy, you know, mages and and uh, warriors and such. So we really can uh, 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 play around with how we want to do customization, where people are are more close to real life type stuff. So I'm sure, yeah, I've, I've been shown a lot of that cosplay stuff and, and the, the fan interest already for sites and, and different things that people are doing is amazing when uh, it's off of basically one demo. They haven't seen a whole, a whole lot yet, so it's, uh, it's, it's pretty great. Okay, so I don't know how detailed you can go into this because it's literally been hush-hush the whole time, but will crafting be intense as MMOs where you have to go out and farm mats for what you need, trade mats with other players, uh, auction house, etc., etc.? Uh, uh, yeah, the the crafting we you know I can't go into detail on it, but it it, it does exist. It is uh, important to the game. I think uh, it fits great into the to the uh, uh, kind of the 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 world we're create you know the immersive world we want to create. So you know in this type of situation. Uh, coming across things and saving everything you come across is important. Trying to create new things out of what you have is important. Um, and as a philosophy that we have, or you know, the uh, for the team is, uh, I think crafting is one of those things that there are a small populate uh, part of the population in these types of games that want to get really into it. Like that's what they. That's what they look for in these games. Uh, so you want to have the depth for those types of players. But the vast majority of people, I believe, want to uh, want to have access to it. They want it to be interesting and fun and useful, but they don't need to, uh, uh, you know, spend hours and hours on uh, crafting such item. So we have two kind of. Uh, we're trying to serve two kind of masters in that. So the uh, the way we want our crafting to be is we want it to be very important very approachable um, and then if you really want to get crazy with it uh, uh, that opportunity will be there for you as well but the the main thing is is it is important for the game it is important for uh, uh, also you know saving and and kind of tracking things you f you come across and find out in in New York nice um, when you're t so you're labeling the game as an RPG now RPG now this questions by dig Douglet. Will there be choices that could impact how the story of the game goes, as in like kind of like how you know Bioware does it, where you choose you you know the answer and it could impact you later on and so forth? Yes, uh, the this one I can't really touch. I think the story is going to be the story. No, but I mean the story is going to be very important. Uh, what I can say uh, talk about what I like about. Uh, uh, open world stories is something that's smart. I think we have a very uh, current concept for our world and a very scary concept for our world for what's happening. So the story needs to be, the narrative uh, needs to be just as smart. And, uh, uh, you know, and that's how we're approaching it. But we, we want a story where uh, you, it's not linear, I guess, is the best way. It's really hard with uh, to do a, a story arc in a game where you want to allow players and encourage players to go in all kinds of different directions. Um, so, uh, you know, specific-wise, I can pretty much guarantee we will never be talking about the story because I think it's a huge part of the experience for you when you discover that for the first time, and it's a, it's a big spoiler if you do. But I can tell you that we know it's, it's very important. Uh, we're working a lot on making sure that it's, uh, for me, good enough and makes sense to, uh, uh, to the world that, that we're creating. Um, and that it, that works in a, in a game world where you can potentially go in a lot of different directions. Okay, that, that's a lot. <laughs> the, right. um, okay, so two, about two or three more questions here. Okay. The last one regards to um, expansions. Micro is asking, uh, will there be more cities to explore, or will expansions be more or less more content within New York City itself? 
Uh, doesn't he want the first game first? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I guess it's more uh, or less a question on, like, you know, like, longevity, like, you know, his end game. Sure, Because, sure. you know, there's all these, you know, literally, you know, you know, we won't say names, but, you know, some games just fail at end game, and then it's just, you know, move on, you know, but they need yes, these, yes. so it's kind of like that. But I'm thinking that's what the question really means, so... Okay, yeah, I, I can say that we are building the division as uh, it's a new franchise for Ubisoft, so we want to build upon it uh, uh, from from this first game. I can't say that, uh, uh, you know, about locations or whatever he's asking for different, you know, cities, So, but I can say that we do want to build on this game with future content for, uh, uh, for what we come out with. Um, and uh, I can okay, and and I can also say that we are very very uh, mindful of uh, of keeping players, of having enough content and things to do once you've reached uh, you know kind of the end of your leveling chain and the end of the uh, of the narrative, for instance. What do I do in the game now? Now that I've uh, I've I've kind of finished uh, the content that you had and. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, not to name names, I would say that this is some place that a lot of these type of online RPGs don't do so well. And uh, you, we really need to make sure that we spend enough time in development and focus on those areas. And, uh, and we are. That'd be awesome, because I mean, every single developer, you know, could talk the talk. No offense to you guys, you know, I have, you know, tons of faith in you guys. But, you know, and I, you know, Ubisoft is just such a great company and they don't buy other companies like Massive if they don't, you know, so I believe in you guys 110%, so. Well, thank you. <laughs> the And I'm sure everybody else, pretty much especially at the Division world, definitely believes in you guys and, you know, that's why we're <laughs> here to, you know, help spread the word and just make it just that much better. So, I don't know if you can hear them or not, but if you listen very carefully, I hear a lot of fans yelling, ask about PvP! But I know you're not allowed to discuss anything yet because that's down the road. But um, please, you know, don't you know, don't keep us waiting long on hearing. So the final fan question uh, in regards to it's actually in regards to PVE and PVP. Uh, Tomcat62 asks, and this is actually I actually have another question on top of this, um, which is technically out there, so it's not like it's going to be a bomb or anything, but. Um, it's a conspiracy question. How about that? But anyway, so back okay, to okay. Tomcat 62's question. With the users who don't PvP, will they be able to experience the game completely without having to go into dark zones to complete anything? That's a that's a really good question. It, it touches on the uh, kind of the the solo player versus multiplayer question as well in my mind. Um, and the answer to both of those is absolutely. He will be able to experience the full content of the game, find out the story, uh, you know, level all the way to max level, and never have to step foot into PvP. I think it's important. Uh, that we design and kind of structure the game that way. Um, now what we are doing is extremely incentivizing the reasons for, uh, what was his name? Tom447 uh, or? No, Tomcat62. So Tomcat62, uh, uh, hopefully you will, you will get teased and really kind of uh, uh, want to check out what's happening in the Dark Zones and you really will like, come to find that you like that type of gameplay. And it's more of that of a, a that approach. We will never require anyone to shoot or you know potentially be shot by another player uh, to fully experience the, uh, let's say, PvE content of the division. Right. So, okay, so this leads to my question. I actually just made this question up tonight when I was watching the okay, E3 okay. presentation. Um, now, you don't have to elaborate on PvP much with this question, but from what I picked up on the map in the video at the end, the dark zone areas are, as I guess you could say, blocking access to other parts of the city, and since we don't know much on transportation yet within the game, would, ex would accessing other parts of New York City kind of require you to walk through dark zones? Uh, well, I mean, uh, the, the, the map that we have uh, won't be released, I would say, for quite some time. But just if you kind of think about my last question, Mark, the, 
uh, if we required people to go through areas to reach a, to through a PVP area to reach another area that we were asking them to go to for whatever reason, that would be almost like we were requiring them to PVP. Well, uh, here, in my mind, here's how I kind of dissecting your last answer was when you're saying kind of like you're you. When I'm thinking how it's dark zones are basically areas that are. When they cross into this, the game recognizes it and it opens up into more of a instance base with other players inside there. And then when they leave it, it they kind of like drop out, all with non-loading. So that's that's how I'm seeing it. And then that's how I'm seeing it. if they fire upon somebody else, then they may have technically might have activated PvP. But then of course this is all assumptions. This is all just based on fans like us who are just trying to figure stuff out, you know, without knowing. Exactly. <laughs> but that's how I'm basing it. You, you, you guys got to be patient. It's going to be good. Trust me. Uh, we, we, uh, uh, I, it goes to my, my philosophy on everything. If, if you know exactly how it works before the game comes out, I think it's less fun. Um, so so I, I know we have a lot of very, very experienced and smart fans and smart gamers, so it's not like it's a complete mystery how it's, uh, how it's going to work. I will put it that way. But uh, uh, the details of it, um, you know, I, wanna, I think we're going to hold on to for as long as we can because we want it to be fresh and we want it to be a big new thing for the players in the division. So um, I guess to... Just to circle back to uh, what we're, what you, your question is that I don't think uh, it would be fair or smart to require people to to PvP to access a certain other type of content that they want to do uh, if it's required for the game. Now, if it were something that were optional, that was exploration or something else I was trying to uh, potentially investigate, then absolutely, those could be in very, very dangerous areas. But if it's something for the mainstream, you know, uh, uh, path, if you will, uh, we can't force players through PvP because I think that would be then holding their hand and forcing them into a game experience uh, that we chose, which is not what we're about with the division. Now, I'm... Uh Basically, I was elaborating from, you know, Nicholas, uh, his interview when he was stating that he was stating in the interview at E3 about, um, and this isn't really a question, I guess, but, you know, he was debating, <laughs> stating that okay. uh, PVE is within the dark zones, and he, you know, he blatantly said, you know, you can PVE, you could do PVE missions within the dark zones. And then if you look at, I know this map isn't final, of course, at the end of the video, but the police mm -hmm. station was within a dark zone. And so I'm just thinking, you know, that's, you know, there's these PVE missions that are kind of like, uh, you know, who gets there first and then who can capture and all that other stuff. So is that the interview when I was diving across his body to try to stop him from speaking? That, that, it was the one with it was the one with uh, Adam Sessler. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I I think that if if that content is out there and you guys are smart and uh, uh, as incessant as you are, I'm not going to elaborate because I I you know I want to keep that for as long as possible. But I know that there's been comments by this person and that person plus you know you guys have to keep in mind we're still in development and you know the things that th exactly so we it could be it's an iterative process and we we play every single day we have a huge play test twice a week and if it comes to be where we need to make changes as we get closer and more and more things are in the game then we'll make changes because it's all about the the end experience so even uh, you know, uh, Nicholas or me saying things now doesn't even necessarily mean they will be so in uh, at, these, at times. these times. But it is what so, we have to uh, go off of ever as a right exactly, now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But um, exactly. Uh, speaking of that, I you know if you just if you need another person to, to play test, you know I'm always available. So <laughs> I might be eighty thousand miles away, I, but I, you I know. Think, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we 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 we're, we're good on requests, but I I think. Uh, you know, it's it's not going to be too long till we start getting people in to, to play the game. So, um, you know, we're working hard, guys. We're we're trying to get it out as soon as possible. But the thing is, is it's got to be uh, it's got to be right and it's got to be fun. Otherwise, you'll be disappointed. We'll be disappointed, and there's no point in that. All right. So, before I let you go, Ryan, I want to thank the fans for submitting their questions. And if your question wasn't asked, remember, it's all his fault. 
It's my fault, guys. As you as usual, as usual. Yeah. So I submitted a bunch of questions. He got back to me with the ones that I was at, uh, able to ask, but later down the road, assuming pretty much next year around E3 time, we'll probably have another fan questionnaire, and hopefully we'll be able to get more details. And so coming off this interview, I hope you all gathered a lot more intel when I hold the next TDW fan Q&A with the massive team. Your questions, I really want your questions to push the limits for what we need to know about the game, of course. If you don't want to know, then, you know, first of all, you should have never been watching this video in the first place. And if so, you can be completely secret and just be mind blown, but it doesn't even matter. Even if I knew everything, I'd still be mind blown when I play the game. So, thanks again, Ryan. It was a pleasure to be here today. Video interviews are always a million times more awesome and entertaining. Everyone at the Division World thanks you for your time and is eagerly awaiting the release of Tom Clancy's The Division. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for everyone's interest. And uh, we really appreciate uh, these, these types of sites and you guys uh, in particular as well. And uh, I hope I, was, I gave you a little more uh, uh, to go on. And it's early here in the morning, so I apologize for uh, you know, my babbling if, that's, uh, if, if that occurred. Yeah.